Hello everyone, finally CGL tier 1 results are out, but the fact is, some of us are not ready for the exam. Out of all the aspirants who wrote, 1.3 lakh students were shortlisted and there are around 15,000 vacancies. So the real competition is among the top 20%, but there are some of us who were not expecting that our name would be in the list. The classic example is our own teammate who works in the maths R&D department. The guy gave tier 1 and he was not expecting his name in the list and all these days he was playing with his chota son niece. Now once the result is released, the name is in the list and now the guy is clueless as to what to do. There are so many of us who are at this situation and some of us were already expecting that our name would be in the list and we are preparing. For everyone, this video is relevant and valid. In the next 10 to 15 minutes, let's talk about what is the right thing to do as far as CGL tier 2 is concerned, what are our sources and we will dive deep into maths and I'll talk to you what to do about reasoning. So let's start with the topic and at this particular moment, the subjects that you have in tier 2 are maths and reasoning. The real challenge as far as maths and reasoning is concerned is with respect to time management because you have 30 questions in maths, you have 30 questions in reasoning, all in all you have one hour, which means either maths or reasoning, one of the subjects you should complete them in 25 minutes. Ideally, reasoning you have to complete it in 25 minutes so that you will have 35 minutes left out for maths. So, maths and reasoning, the real challenge is about time management and in GS, the challenge is about accuracy. GS is one subject where you feel like you want to answer everything but there are chances that you might end up with wrong answers and any chance of any incident of bad accuracy in GS will dent your prospects in tier 2. Now there is one more subject, the real subject, the game changer of the entire exam that is English. English you have 135 marks. English is a subject that will eat up your time as well as it needs accuracy. Especially after the change in pattern, you can expect that English question papers are going to be lengthy. The classical example for this is your own face papers, CGL papers and steno papers etc. So your English papers, the questions are going to be lengthy and the question will definitely take up one minute of your time. And by the time you read, you solve 20-25 questions, you might even feel exhausted because you don't have the habit of reading such a lengthy questions, 40-45 questions at the same stretch. And English is also a dangerous subject. English is one subject where we feel like we want to mark a particular option and that is right. But once we come home, the answer choice is wrong because we did not check the right rule. So these are the real challenges for maths and reasoning. Your challenge is with respect to time. For GS, it is accuracy. For English, it is time and accuracy. So now we will talk about how to overcome these challenges. And I have certain general tips and general suggestions that I want to talk to you as far as your tier 2 is concerned. First thing is, revision is the key this time. Remember, you guys have cleared tier 1. Your name is in the list, which means you have certain amount of good knowledge. Kuch to hai dimag mein that you are able to do tier 1 properly. So now, at this point, you don't need new books and new sources. All you need is the revision and you need to revise the right kind of sources and you need timed practice. The meaning of timed practice is, now, you have around 20 to 25 days for the exam. The expected date of the exam, SSC calendar said that exam would be in the third week of January. Now, there are certain sections of people who say that the exam would be on 18th of January. Some people expected that the exam is on 13th and there is other group of people who say the exam could be on 23rd of January. Now, assuming that the exam is on 13th, so that whatever extra days are left out, we have enough time for revision. So, for our convenience, let's assume that exam is on 13th of January. So, if exam is on 13th of January, it means that we have around 20 to 22 days, 20 odd days left for the exam. And at this point, for these 22 days, you need time to practice. The meaning of time to practice is now, today onwards, whenever you practice maths, whenever you practice reasoning, ensure that your practice sheet has got 30 questions and try to complete this practice sheet in a single stretch that is in 25 minutes. So if you can do timed practice in the exam, time management will not be a problem and you need to analyze what you are doing and top of all those things, please push your limits. You have 20 days, push your limits, 
do whatever is needful you can definitely clear the exam and last but not the least last year i know a couple of aspirants who gave their tr2 very very well they were scoring around 340s and 350s etc their scores were also very good despite which their name was not in the list the reason they did not perform the type test properly please don't ignore type test 20 to 25 minutes a day please give it on type test and when you are doing typing one thing that you need is you need to know your finger placement a particular finger goes on a particular key there is a style of finger placement that we need to know if you don't know typing at all if you are the starting point of type you can start with typing.com on typing.com they will teach you the finger placement on the keyboard if you are good at finger placement only you want to practice the 2000 words in 15 minutes style practice that is practice of passages then you can go to monkey type and you can do the type practice please don't ignore the type practice type practice is extremely important now in telegram in the afternoon i posted a question as to come up with all your queries as far as tier 2 is concerned in fact since the tier 2 result was released one major question that i received was where should i practice mocks because there are two things one is tcs mocks look irrelevant the old papers are not so relevant and the new mocks are extremely difficult where are we supposed to practice let me tell you one thing the fact is whatever online mocks are there what are mocks are available at this point of time they are definitely difficult they are at the highest standards so what you can do is you can practice the same mocks in a offline format that is you can pick up phase 13 and you can also pick up cgl chsl you can pick up these questions you can organize 30 questions into a single practice set and you can allot a timer of 25 minutes and you can complete these tests trust me this exercise of practicing 30 questions in 25 minutes and immediately go for second set of 30 questions practice them in 25 minutes do this exercise this exercise is more worthy this is more useful than any online mock that is available at this particular moment so that is with respect to mock test now we will have a detailed discussion with respect to mathematics after that i'll talk to you about reasoning now as far as mathematics is concerned my base based on which i am coming up with the data is phase 13 graduation level question papers because out of all the papers that are conducted by ssc of 2025 phase papers are difficult so i am using those papers as my base and i am talking to you as far as phase 13 papers are concerned this is the overall composition of the questions for instance in statistics permutations and combinations there are all in all by the way there are nine shifts and out of all these nine shifts from stats pnc and probability there are 23 questions from advanced maths there are 112 questions and from arithmetic there are 90 questions and if you take a look at your syllabus copy these numbers reflect your syllabus copy very clearly this is the syllabus copy of your tier 2 where the copy clearly says for example there are seven items which are there in your list of which arithmetic is there only in one single item rest all is more or less it is advanced math and statistics and probability so your paper would be reflecting this similar kind of a pattern and in tier 2 of 2025 the composition that you can expect is in stats 1 to 2 questions and for this phase 13 papers you can practice them that is more than enough probability pnc you can have two questions mensuration you will have very good number of questions trigonometry 4 to 5 rest of the advanced maths which includes coordinate geometry algebra heights and distances and various other things around 6 to 7 questions and in arithmetic you will have around 12 to 13 questions this is the expected overall combination so all in all you need to prepare all the chapters properly but i have categorized all these chapters into three different sections first is these chapters are easy but more of us most of us tend to ignore these chapters for example statistics pnc probability coordinate geometry maxima minima majority of these topics can be solved with the help of a simple formula so my suggestion is please don't ignore this assuming that there are around 6 questions from these topics out of all the 30 there are 6 questions from these topics even in such instance all these 6 questions can be sorted directly and you will have lot of time that is saved 
सो प्लीज बी वेरी केयरफुल एंड द नेक्स्ट पार्ट इज विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू एडवांस मैथ्स एडवांस मैथ्स विल हैव मोर वेटेज दैन यर अर्थमेटिक एंड विद इन एडवांस मैथ्स वी कैन एक्सपेक्ट दैट मेन्सुरेशन विल हैव मोर वेटेज द रीजन वाई एम सेइंग दिस इज यू पिक अप ऑल द पेपर्स सीजेल सीएचएसएल फेज 13 ग्रैड मैट्रिक एचएस इन ऑल दीस पेपर्स द वेटेज ऑफ मेन्सुरेशन इज डेफिनेटली हायर when you compare it with the other chapters so within advanced maths mensuration followed by trigo algebra number system etc and as far as maths is concerned in chsl in cgl papers are easy they are not so calculative papers are easy papers are doable but there is one thing that i have noticed that is there is a level difference between cgl paper and chsl paper and this level difference is clearly visible so assuming that a similar level difference is maintained in the tier 2 paper then you can expect that arithmetic topics are slightly calculative in nature so this is the kind of maths paper that you can expect when you give your tier 2 question paper and as far as the maths syllabus is concerned please be cautious with respect to mensuration because when most of you were preparing for tier 1 i clearly told you to focus upon the topics such as right circular cone right prism right cylinder right pyramid right so these topics are still relevant you can definitely expect questions on prisms pyramids cones frustums etc similarly even in statistics there are topics such as standard deviation there can be questions on carl pearson coefficient that is one topic where there were questions in phase papers so please prepare that topic as well so this is with respect to the overall syllabus of mathematics but now what i want to tell you is we know the syllabus but at this point what we need to do is not that we are going to open a book and we start with level 1 we start with question number 1 of level 0 and we practice till level 2 level 3 that is not what you are supposed to do at this point of time you have cleared tier 1 which means you have come till a stage now in these 23 odd days that is left for the exam you have to do practice and i have a suggestion as far as your practice is concerned divide your practice into two phases phase number 1 is from 20th of december till 3rd of january in this phase you are doing chapter wise tough questions for example tomorrow 20th of december you can do mensuration or chapter wise difficult questions algebra chapter wise difficult questions stats chapter wise difficult questions of the questions that were asked in 2025 you can do this and from 4th of january till d day of the exam again you do difficult questions but this time you have to pick up the mixer questions as in the questions are from various chapters because that is the real time scenario and to get yourself used to the real time scenario all these 20 23 odd days that are left for you my suggestion is practice in slots in each slot practice 30 questions in 25 minutes and in a given day for a subject of mathematics try to come up with three such slots which means you are practicing maths for one and a half hour this is a minimum amount of time and for each slot once you complete it give a time of around 15 minutes to analyze whatever questions went wrong out of those 30 for example two three questions went wrong pick it up make a small note where you went wrong proceed towards the next set so in this manner practice in sets for each set make sure there are 30 questions and you don't allot more than 25 minutes of time for that particular set and practice in two different phases first phase chapter wise questions second phase mixed questions so you are ready for the exam now what are the right sources where can you pick up these questions from there are three sources that i want to suggest first is 2025 ssc papers out of these papers you can pick up difficult and moderate questions next good sources 2018 2019 2020 2020 tier 2 maths question papers and last 3 years based cds question papers out of these question papers you can definitely pick up the difficult questions and you can practice them now what i want to do on my behalf to support you guys for your tier 2 preparation is at siddhi we are going to do this work for you we are picking up the most difficult questions of all these papers and we will organize them in the form of pdf and along with a time table we will post those pdfs in telegram channel so all you need to do is 
you can check our telegram channel you can download those pdfs and you can practice from those pdfs we will ensure that we will give you a practice set of 30 questions per pdf that is per set and all along these days as far as maths is concerned there are a couple of non negotiable things you must do these without fail first thing is revising your own short notes now if you have a formula book that you prepared on your own well and good if you don't have a formula book please prepare one and revise your formula notes on a daily basis till the end of your exam give good amount of focus on your formula notes trust me if you have the right kind of formula notes more than 60% of your paper you can handle directly from your own formula notes so that is one thing second thing is on a daily basis please practice calculation sheets please prepare a small calculation sheet where you have addition subtractions multiplications divisions prepare a small sheet like that and practice those calculation sheets without fail these are two things that are non negotiable you must do till you complete your exam and till you give your final paper now as far as reasoning is concerned i don't want to waste your time watching lot of videos etc so tonight i will write a detailed post as to what to do with respect to reasoning it will be posted in our telegram channel that is siddhi prep so you can check our telegram channel i will write a detailed video i mean i will write a detailed post on reasoning and i'll give you a time table with respect to mathematics in the next video i'll talk about gs and english so in the comment section of this video you can come up with any sort of questions that you have as far as english and gs are concerned i will address all those questions in tomorrow's video see you all then siddhito sadhu